as the dawning of the day moves us from darkness to light, so will the entrance of God's Word lighten up your life. Stay tuned for the teaching ministry of Charlotte Falver as she presents this light with Bringing to Light Ministries. Today is uh, your day for victory in the Jesus. Good day to you, and I'm glad that you have tuned in to this program, Bringing to Light. I am Charlotte Falver, and it's a joy to be with you. We're excited about all that God is doing through this ministry. I know many years ago when we started a, a radio broadcast, in fact, that's been 21 years ago as, at the time of this particular teaching, and I remember when God spoke so vividly to my heart that He wanted me to take the light of Him to those who would hear. And uh, He spoke to me, bring into light. And so that's what this ministry is all about. As we begin to look at God's Word and see truths that maybe you've never seen before or maybe you need to hear them again. I remember what the Word of God did in my life as I was raised in a traditional church, which I'm very grateful for my heritage. And my daddy was the pastor of that church. Church. And I had been, I think, to more funerals and weddings than anybody else and at every service and been in revival meetings all over the place. And again, I am so grateful for what I learned during those times. But at the same time, there was areas that I was living in such defeat. And as I became a young adult and then married and had children, so defeated in so many areas because I did not know God's truth. And when it came so alive to me, it's like, I have got to tell these truths to other people. I was so excited about God's Word, I wanted to go tell the world. And I was ready to do that, thinking it would be just a teaching. But then God has allowed me the opportunities to minister in 13 nations and many opportunities right here where we live. And I'm just so excited about that. And I just would like to be on every station and declare what I believe God has shown unto me. And I can honestly say I'm alive today because of the words that I have received from God's holy word. If it had not been for this, I would have believed a lie and I would have died an early death. And I will forever be grateful to my Father for what He has revealed to me. And I just want you to know the truths that He has revealed to me. Well, let's get into prayer right now. Invite the teacher who is the Holy Spirit and welcome him to open up the Word of God to us today. Father, thank you again for the privilege of being here, Father, declaring who you are. Use me, Father, to speak into the lives of those who've tuned in today. And Lord, we give you praise and glory for it in advance. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're talking about the power of praise and worship. And we have seen that God is worthy of our praise and worship. No matter what we're feeling or no matter what we're going through, we should be worshipers of God because He is worthy. We saw in our last teaching the importance of praise and worship in that this is exactly what Abraham chose to do when he received the promise of God that he was to be the father of many nations. He held fast to that promise and the Bible said he was empowered in his faith to believe that as he gave praise. Now I think we can learn a lot from that. As he praised the Lord for what he had heard God speak to his heart, he could hear the, that promise. And what does the Bible say about that? In fact, I wrote it down, Romans 10, 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And I like to say that hears and hears and hears and hears. We need to keep on hearing what God's Word says. But he began to praise the Lord that he was going to be a father of many nations. I think it's interesting as well when God said, I'm changing your name from Abram to Abraham. This meant that Abraham was going to have to go and tell everybody, my name is Abraham. My name is Abraham. My name is Abraham. And I'm sure that people were responding, why? Abraham, father of many nations, we've known you for a long time. And we know you're 99 years old and you don't even have any kids, father of many nations. And I'm sure they laughed. And there might have been times that Abraham could have given up and quit and quit believing and here's Sarah in her 90s and have a children. God, how, how can this be? But he chose to call things that be not as though they were. What was he doing? He was calling himself a father of many nations because that's what God had promised. Well, you think, well, he was special. Well, he got a special promise. Wait a minute. 
Do you know you and I are special? We have been given the Word of God and it is filled with the promises of God. I want you to know when we have need, we can come to the Word of God and say, God, this is what your Word says. Do you have a wayward child? Do you know there's promises of God for that, that they can come home? Do you have sickness, disease in your body? Then we need to hold fast to God's promises about that. I know sometimes the answers that we are desiring, they don't always happen just the way we would like to see them. But I know that anything that's not a faith is sin, and faith is a confidence, it's assurance, it's a knowing that we know. So I have to choose to take God's promises, and I'll say, Father, I'm not going to let you go with this. That's one thing I'm believing God for right now. I'm taking the promises of God for an individual that they will live for God and serve God. And I told God just today, I said, God, I'm not going to let you go. This is what your word says, Father. And Lord, you are not a man that you should lie, but God, your truth. And Lord, I lay hold of this, Father, and I'll not let you go in Jesus' name. And that's faith. And I've got a confidence in that. And then I come with praise. We're talking about the power of praise and worship. And I begin to thank God and praise Him for what I'm believing Him to do. So again, I believe this is an ingredient to our faith that many times is left out. Well, I can't praise Him. I haven't seen it yet. I'd be a hypocrite if I did that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, as we've said before, a hypocrite is someone who pretends to be something they are not. The Bible calls you a Christian if you've asked Jesus to come into your heart. And He says He's called us to be praisers and worshipers. Anything, or the Bible says that if we have breath, that we should be praising and worshiping the Lord. So you're a worshiper. You are a praiser. And if you're not doing that, then that's the hypocrite. So I choose to praise and worship my Father for He is worthy. And as I hear myself begin to praise Him for the things based on His Word, that causes faith to arise in my heart. And faith again and patience is what inherits the promises of God. Now with that in mind, I've turned here in my Bible to Psalms chapter 8 and verse 2, and I think you'll see something else that praise and worship does. The scripture says, Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. A very powerful verse. And I want us to think in line with this scripture is Matthew in 21 and verse 16. And you will see that out of the mouth and babes and sucklings thou hast ordained praise. Now this particular passage calls it strength. So we're seeing that these two words uh, are there side by side being used in the same place, the same way. And so I want you to learn something here. Again, the scripture says, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained, God in us ordained strength. God ordained in us praise. Now with that in mind, as we're familiar with a passage in John chapter 4 and verse 24, God is a spirit and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. When I worship the Lord and I praise Him, yes, it is me who yields those words unto God. I yield praise and worship from my heart I express, Father, I love you. I give you praise. But yet, God, I know it's because you first loved me. But what am I doing? I am praising and worshiping. But notice, because I am born again and I have the Holy Spirit within me, it is the Holy Spirit who will send forth that praise and worship. Sometimes I'll say, Holy Spirit, let me praise and worship the Father today in a way that will bring joy to His heart. Holy Spirit, what does the Father need today? Use me to lift up holy praise and worship unto Him. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, the scripture says, Lord, you have ordained strength. So as I begin to praise and worship the Lord, I will be strengthened. I will be empowered. Now you want to hear another interesting scripture? We've looked at this before. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Do you know that oftentimes we may feel down and we may feel discouraged, 
But if we will go to God in prayer and again begin to lift up the word, the promises that he has given to us, just our covenant with God, and we begin to thank him and praise him for it, and I begin to hear what God's word has said to me, and I know God's word is always the truth. Do you know that out of my spirit, man, will be the fruit of joy? That joy will rise up. Yes, God has ordained in you and me this praise, this worship, and what will it do? It will strengthen us. Sometimes we become weak in our faith. We feel like giving up. We feel like quitting. We have a, a time that we may feel oppressed or depressed or worried or anxious. And I will always say to people, and we're not going to look at it today, but in your time, look at Hebrews chapter 4. The Bible says that the children of Israel did not enter in into their rest because they did not mix the gospel with faith. You see, we have the Word of God, and we may be quick to say, oh, yeah, I know it says that. I have uh, counseled with people, or maybe in the altars, I've talked with people when they would come to the Lord, and I'd begin to say a certain scripture. Oh, I know it says that. Yeah, I know that. I know that. But, but uh, yeah, I know that, but, and they'll start making excuses. And, you know, what they're doing is they have a head knowledge of that Word, but they don't have a heart knowledge. You see, a heart knowledge is where faith comes in because that's where confidence is. Now, I want to say this to you today. It's all right to start out with a head knowledge, but we can't stay there because we're not going to receive from God because we have a head knowledge. We're going to receive from God when we have not only a head knowledge, but it gets into our hearts that we can say, I know that I know this word, this promise right here is true. I was giving you an example in our teaching uh, recently how that I started holding fast to God's Word for this person in my family. And I began speaking the Word of God and the promises of God. And I said, Lord, I'm asking on the authority of your Word, your will. And you said, Lord, that if I ask according to your will that you hear me. And if you hear me, then Lord God, then I have the petitions that I desire of you. And so, Father, this is my petition and I believe I receive it and I thank you for it. And as I continually to give God praise and thanksgiving that this is done. What am I doing? I'm calling things that be not as though they were. I want you to know that it will strengthen me. It will empower me to hold on and not to give up in believing God. Now, there's something else here that we can see. If you'll look at it with me once again, it's that out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained strength, or which we have seen praise, because of thine enemies. Because of thine enemies. Now, yes, the praise and worship goes unto the Lord. But there's something that happens when we begin to praise and worship the Lord. The Bible says, because of thine enemies that, listen to it, that thou mightest steal, S-T-I-L-L, or silence the enemy and the avenger. What does your praise and your worship do? It not only gives you strength to believe and hold fast to God, but it will put to silence what the devil is doing against you. Now, I want to say this to you. I counsel enough people and have counseled enough years that I know how a lot of people are operating and acting, not only in their lives, but I have to come back to my own life. You see, many times we'll see the promises in God's Word and we will begin to say, God, this is what your Word says, and I'm holding fast to this, Lord. I'm asking on the authority of this promise. Lord, I believe I receive it, Father. And based on this word, Lord God, I'm going to stand and hold fast to you, Lord, believing that you're going to bring to pass what I believe in you for. And I can bind the devil in the name of Jesus that he's not going to steal what God is doing and he's not going to steal the word of God from me. But you know, when I will then start thanking God and praising God, begin to worship God, something begins to happen in me. Several things. As we have seen, faith will come to my heart because I'm hearing myself speak the word. What else happens? Strength comes to help me to keep on believing God and to do what I need to do. And what else happens? The enemy, the devil, is silenced. Have you ever started believing for something or praying about something? And it seems like right on the wings of something like that, something over here would begin to happen, a circumstance, or a thought would come, yeah, but you don't know what's going to happen over here. You know, you may make that decision to go ahead and move in that direction, but you know what's going to happen? And here comes all this negative stuff shooting at your mind. You know, they may die. Or this disease, you know what, it's going to cripple them. All of these negative thoughts that can vie for your attention. 
You see, the scripture says we receive the promises through what? Faith and patience, single-minded. A double-minded man, according to the book of James, said a double-minded man shall receive nothing from the Lord. We must stay single-minded. So when the enemy begins to speak those thoughts, we may think was my thoughts. But you know what? Many times those thoughts are coming from the works of darkness. We need to recognize what is trying to pull us away from believing God. Let's remember the story. What happened when Peter was in the boat and he looked and it was Jesus. But he said, Lord, if it be you, bid me come. And Jesus said one word. And what was that word? Come. And when he said the one word, we know that Peter crawled out of that boat. Now, what you've got to realize, this wasn't a sunshiny day. It'd be one thing to have a, a nice day and the waters are all calm and, and go after Jesus. But you know what? There was a storm going on that day. And to walk on the water, storm or no storm, that's a big deal, don't you think? But there's a storm going on and there's lightning that's flashing and the thunder and it's busting on that water. I can't imagine how it must have felt. And the wind's blowing up on him. He was walking on the water. Peter stepped out on that one word, come. But all at once there was something that began to vie for his attention. And he began to look down at the waves that was licking him up on the legs. All at once he began to he feel his hair blowing as the wind was pushing against him. A lightning began to pierce through the air and the thunder began to vibrate around him. And the Bible says it's when he looked away from Jesus that he began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. And we know the story that Jesus reached down, pulled him up out of the waters, and they walked toward the boat and they got in safe. You see, we need the Word of God. God is speaking to you today, His Word. Will you dare to get out of your comfort zone, your boat, even when the storms may be raging, and do what God's Word says? I'll say this to you today. When you get out of your comfort zone to follow after God, don't think the enemy, yes, the devil, is going to stand by and twill his thumbs and say, well, now, aren't they sweet? They're doing such a mighty thing. No, what's he going to do? He's going to try to vie for your attention with circumstances and situations. He's going to try to pull you away from the promises of God's Word. Why? Because just as Peter began to sink, we can begin to sink in our believing. We can become filled with fear and worry and depression and oppression. We begin to say, you know, I tried that stuff and it didn't work. But you know what? We didn't stand and hold fast to God. We didn't keep on keeping on. That's what God wants you to do. When you begin to praise and worship the Lord, even if you're following after God and the enemy's on every side trying to get your attention, trying to discourage you, trying to depress you, begin to praise and worship the Lord. And I want you to know when you do, you have shut the mouth of the devil. He can't stand it when you will praise and worship the Lord. We're going to see that in some of our teaching here. He hates it when you praise and worship. Why? Because you're worshiping in spirit and in truth. One scripture says, as you draw nigh or near to God, He will draw nigh near to you. When God's on the scene, God being light, what do you think happens to the darkness? Have you ever gone into a room and turned on the lights even though that room may have been very, very dark before? Did the darkness remain when you flipped on the lights? No, no, the darkness left. So is it with the devil. Demons, they leave when light begins to shine. When you begin to speak the Word of God, you are speaking the light. When you begin to praise and worship, you're worshiping in spirit and in truth. And I want you to know demons are silenced when you begin to praise and worship the Lord. So we see that as we praise and worship, there is strength. And it says again that thou mightest steal or put to silence the en enemy and the avenger. The avenger. Now, when we look at Second Chronicles, I want us to look at this passage as well, chapter 20. And listen to this in verse 21. I read all of this when you have time. 
And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. Now, this is Moses. There he is. And we know the enemy has come against him, and it's a mighty enemy, greater than the numbers that they have among the children of Israel, greater in strength. But Moses is instructed by the Spirit of God. He began to appoint those, again, who would be singers unto the Lord. Now, when we think about praising and worshiping, most of us may think about singing songs. And yes, that is a way to praise the Lord. When we study David's life, especially in Psalms, isn't it not the Psalms, the songs that he wrote and he began to sing unto the Lord, playing his instrument? Well, yes, that's a very powerful thing. And I think there are times as David was praising and worshiping the Lord during that time, that as we have seen, praise out of mouth of babes and sucklings will bring forth strength. It will bring forth strength. So I think David was empowered with this strength, this supernatural strength. And I like what somebody said, supernatural. The super being God, the natural being us. But when God takes to hold together with us, we can flow in the supernatural. So here he appointed singers unto the Lord and that they should praise the beauty of holiness. They should praise the Almighty God for he is holy and worthy to be worshiped and praised. As they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. Now, you may think with me just for a moment, this seems a strange thing to be doing, to get out there and praise the Lord and say His mercy endureth forever when the enemy is coming towards us and they are mighty and they are great. I'm supposed to praise and worship the Lord in the midst of this. I think this is a good time to start running. <laughs> well, that may be the natural way to think, but I want you to know God never called His children to run from the devil. He never called you to run away. In fact, the scripture is very clear when it talks about the armor that he's given you to put on to protect you. He did not provide anything for the, your, your, the back of you. Why? Because we're not to be running. There is no rear guard except for God's presence on the back of you. We are to face the enemy head on without fear, knowing that our God is a mighty God and he's given us the word of God to come against the devil. He's, begin, he's given to us praise and worship that will silence the enemy. We have the keys of the kingdom to bind the powers of darkness in Jesus' name. With that in mind, he appointed these praisers. And yes, in the midst of the enemies, they stood there to praise the Lord and to say for his mercy and doeth forever. Verse 22. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Notice when the children of Israel chose to praise and to worship, even in the midst of this, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon and Moab and there at Mount Seir. Now I want you to notice this. When you will choose to praise and worship the Lord, even in the midst of your storm, even in the midst of the things that you're facing, you will be tempted just to lay down and cry. You will be tempted to throw up your hands and say, I might as well quit. You will be tempted to just sit down and say, God, I, I don't understand why this is going on. And we may question things. I'm not saying that that won't happen. But let's don't ever lay down and give up on God. Where do you give up? You see, this looked like there was no hope for the children of Israel. It looked like a hopeless situation. Abraham, it looked hopeless that he could have children. But you see, he believed in hope even against the hope that he had. When hope said there's no way, he had hope anyway. In your life, when it looks like there's no hope, will you dare to hope anyway? Will you choose to hope in God? When you ask and you believe you receive, then will you dare to give God thanks and praise that his word is truth and what he has said he will do? Will you shout loud and begin to give God the praise and the glory? You see, when you do, where the enemy may be holding, where the enemy may be attacking, where the devil may be setting uh, ambushments against us. I want you to know I love the, the promise in Psalm that says that our enemies will fall into their own snares. When the devil is attempting to lay a snare for you or for your family, I want you to know as you will praise and worship the Lord, the devil will fall into his own snare. Isn't that what happened to Haman? 
He was ready to uh, put Mordecai on those gallows. He built them because he was going to hang him. But we know what God did. God turned that around. And I want you to know Mordecai was not only exalted, he was delivered from the hand of Haman and Haman was placed on those gallows himself. You see, the devil may seek to do you harm and he may use people to try to do that. And yes, sometimes we get hurt and we get wounded. But I want you to know God is greater. If you're a child of God today, greater is he that is in you than that one that is in the world. Greater is God in you than the devil that's in this world. And God can set ambushments against your enemy if you will hold fast to God and praise and worship Him in the midst of the storm. Am I saying this is easy? Initially, it may be difficult because we may be so bombarded with our thoughts of what we're seeing, what we're feeling, what's being said. But I want you to know when we will stop and realize, even in the midst of my difficulty, God is worthy of my worship and my praise. And I choose to worship Him. I choose to lift my hands into the Lord. Sometimes I've gone into prayer with a heavy heart, but I put on that anointed music. This is vital. This is powerful. And I will begin to praise and worship the Lord along with the singer of that particular music. Music that's going to edify and encourage me, but in turn give glory to God. And as I begin to worship and praise, I want you to know again, that enemy, the devil, is silenced that has been warring against me. Strength comes to me to be able to face my day and to be able to deal with the situation that I may be dealing with. But you see, we have to initially stand up out of our pity party, stand up out of the places that maybe the enemy has smacked at us or tried to hurt us and make a decision, I will not give up, I will not quit in Jesus' name. I want to pray a quick little prayer for you before I go off the air today. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, Lord, as I extend my hand right now, I break the powers of darkness over the individuals that have tuned in today that are bound in the name of Jesus. I say, Satan, you're a liar, and I demand you to loose them and let them go. I call you free, for whom the Son is set free is free indeed. Be free in Jesus' name and begin to rise up out of that place and begin to praise and worship the Lord, for He's a mighty God. He's a good God. That's all the time we have today. The Lord's will will be back next time. Now, until then, may God bless you and I love you. I love you all.